Hello, today's Arts Map project is about Aboriginal art. I'm guessing some of you have done Aboriginal art before, but before we start, I want to stress that there are different types of Aboriginal art. There's the more traditional Aboriginal art, the, the kind of dot paintings maybe that you, that you may have done before at school. Uh, but there are of Aboriginal artists who do all kinds of art. There are filmmakers, contemporary artists. Um, it doesn't have to be traditional art if it's Aboriginal art. And it doesn't have to be Aboriginal art at all. Um, there are many types of art, artists working in Australia today, but we happen to be looking at this project at Aboriginal artists who are who have um, produced dreaming paintings. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. And in order to do that, we have to look at Aboriginal mythology and in particular creation myths from Australia, which are really, really super exciting. Um, Aborigines believe, and by the way, I keep looking down because I'm reading from my laptop, so um, in case I forget anything, but Aborigines believe that dream time was a time way, way, way back at the beginning of everything. Before anything was created, there was a time called the dream time. And um, at that time, the world was populated by these super spirits or ancestors, these kind of magical beings who were, you know, the first ever living creatures. And these magical beings roamed around the earth and they created everything. They created the land, they created all the living things. This is what um, they believed in. And um, they created everything through song as well. That's another really interesting thing. They walked around the land and they sang things into, into um, existing. So they, wherever they walked, they kind of created lines called song lines. And even today there are, there are Aboriginal tribes who work their way around the country, around Australia, through song. So they sing songs that actually tell them where to go, you know, go around the bush, walk, walk east, you know, and that's how they, they kind of get across their land. It's almost like a, a map that hasn't been drawn down, an audio map. Um, but anyway, um, different tribes have different beliefs about this time. So there's no one story about how things were created. There's loads and loads of different ones. And some tribes believe that the ancestors were actually animals, spirit animals. And that as the animals walked and crawled and slithered across the earth, that's how the earth was shaped. So if you can imagine a giant snake slithering across the earth, leaving a track, that would be where a river would be today. Or, um, you know, a, a huge kangaroo jumping and leaving its paw prints. That would be, you know, maybe craters or where, where mountains rise up, you know. So they think that the, the land was shaped by these uh, the movements of these ancestors. And so um, land was literally shaped by them. And so because of that, many Aboriginal stories tell you about ancestors um, who disappeared from human sight, but still live hidden inside caves, inside little cracks and crevices, or even as natural forces such as rain and lightning and wind. And um, so a lot of tribes link themselves to one of these ancestors and they think they came from one of these ancestors. So there's a lot of uh, Aboriginal tribes who say that they are a, a honeybee tribe or a kangaroo tribe or a shark tribe or a, a rabbit tribe. And they call themselves the honeybee dreaming or the shark dreaming. That's the word that they use, which means that their tribe comes from that particular ancestor and they value um, the strengths and the, the things that are connected to that ancestor. So the honeybee is super busy. The you know the you know the shark is great at hunting. So that each tribe has their animal that they are linked to, and I think that's really interesting. And I think that that's why um, we're going to explore that today. That kind of um, painting. So a dreaming is a painting about your dreaming, which is whatever you think is your your totem animal the animal that represents yourself or it doesn't have to be an animal it could be um it could be a force of nature it could be you could think that you're represented by a lightning bolt or you're represented by a star or you're represented by the wind and you know that's totally up to you what would your dreaming be who what would characterize you well do you love turtles are you a turtle dreaming do you love snakes? Would you be a snake dreaming? Do you feel like you have something in common with kangaroos? Or, you know, have you always loved the moon? What would your dreaming be? And, you know, in case you're confused, um, I have some pictures of some dreamings. Maybe we can zoom in on this. This one is called a bandicoot dreaming. Kind of 
animal is a bandicoot. I'm just trying to think. So that's a bandicoot dreaming. And I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's pretty abstract. There's no picture of a bandicoot in there. Maybe it has something to do with the way the bandicoot moves. Um, this one is a flying ant dreaming. Right? If you look closely, there's loads of little circles with what look like wings on the sides of them. So maybe they represent the flying ant. Um, there's a really cool one here called the water dreaming. I love this one. So it has these kind of swishy wave shapes, lines that kind of swirl around, make you think about the movement of water. And so each picture basically is about that person's dreaming, that the, the creature or the force of nature that represents that person or their tribe. And um, I don't know if you saw, but if you look closely, the paintings are not painted with a brush. They're painted with a stick. So they're made up of tiny dots. So the artist has literally taken a stick and dipped it into paint and made hundreds and thousands of little dots to fill each section instead of just filling things in with a colour. And so this is a specific type of painting, you know, dot painting, which um, is very traditional and it actually comes from um, back a long time ago. They used to paint dots as decorations on their bodies. It was body painting and then slowly people started to use the same patterns that they used to decorate their bodies on um, canvas or actually not on canvas they started painting it onto bark um, and natural things like wood and bark and that's how dot painting came around so they're really decorative they just look really pretty they look like patterns from far away they look really pretty they're full of spirals and stripes and big blocks of color but if you look at them closely they also have a meaning and they these particular ones all have a meaning that's connected to their ancestor their dreaming ancestor